tips, the condition of the governor tips. That's a good one. Make contact firm. And then give them a clean up. A bit, of, a bit of fine emery stuff. Just fine emery, I see. Yeah. Another thing that I watch is the condition of the com, because this one's all right, but you get them with flat spots on them, on the com, mm -hmm. and they chop the brushes out in no time. How do they get flat spots on Oh, it's just the chatter of the brushes. Oh, yeah. This one. What we do there, what we check for here is where in those bushes there, and this one here, and where in the arm there. Get that rebushed every now and again. Where, where's that where? arm then? Just with your right hand, please. Your left hand was hiding it a bit. This arm here. Oh, yeah, yeah. There. It, it That's rig wriggles the, sideways, doesn't the it? The operating arm. Yes. Uh, it wears, and uh, you eventually you can. Uh, move it up and down like that. It's too much wear. You also get wear in these bushes here and they eventually have to be rebushed. The same with that in there. And you've got to watch for for that sort of thing. Okay. And too much of that. You've also got to make sure, see those two interlock contacts at the back? Yes, I see. You must make sure that they are making good contact. And they should be just about in contact now. Just before you get the final hard push in. They, they should yeah. be, yeah. Because what they're, what they're doing is they're making a latching circuit for the line breaker. I understand. That's alright. Screw it in there. The screw that holds the seat in. Yeah, that will come loose and the whole lot will drop off. Oh. Right as the tips. Okay. That's all you want. And you hold the, the fingers closed so you do both sides at once, do you? Yes. Alright. And then I just, that cleans, that does the back of them and wears, and you're filing both the same then, they make good contact. And then I can come up the top here like this and do the front, which doesn't really matter because it doesn't make contact at all. The front, there's no contact ever in the front. It's all the contact is in the back of it. Yes, I think that's best also. It's very dark, but anyway. It's in the second notch, then they both stay in. Now, it doesn't have a lot around here. This is your overload trip arm when they cut too many notches. Feed it up too quickly. Yeah, that lifts up. Yeah, it snaps like that. Does that need much attention? No, not much at all. As long as that's kept clean up there, that contact up there, that's, that needs keeping clean because that'll get a high spot if you're down to high resistance spot. If you don't, if it's not kept clean, then of course you've got to check your leads, make sure that they're firm because they will break. Uh, it's a matter of wear and tear. They're important. I haven't left any of them loose. That's all of them. I watch these 
box here too because they burn those bolts there. The continuous arc burns those two bolts. And that, that one, that one and the other two. And what the thing is to then drop off? Well, now what will happen that if it gets too if they get too badly burnt, then when you go to take the to to change the uh, fingers or anything, you'll find you can't move the bolt because oh. you can't get a, a spanner on. No, them. no slot, no, no no head lift. Yeah. No head lift. There's so you make extra work for yourself there. All I do is just take this off and throw it out. It's as simple as that. <laughs> I don't, a bit of fine glass paper for them. Clean them up. They're what they refer to as cotton reels, are they? Yeah. And it's important not to skip a notch because if you hurry through, rush through, and, right, and push past one of your notches, then you're giving your passengers a rough ride. You're giving your conductor a rough ride. And if you've ever been a conductor, well, you get a rough ride, and you finish up with your bloody legs at the end of the day, up there, notches as they saw. I'm fortunate that I've been replacing some of these chips. I'm lucky that I'm running into some of them. In other words, you haven't got a whole fleet of burnt out tips all at once. Right. Oh, no. That's for years and yet it was in perfect condition. Yeah, and that's because the diaphragm in there is nice and firm. Sometimes, if you're lazy, you don't have to undo that. It will drop down, but... That's best to. Yeah, it's best to. Those two, and they're slotted because of... It's easy to put a screwdriver in them. True. Try and throw a tube spanner, and... Then this just comes apart, and it gives you access to your tips. Right, that should solve that problem. Yeah. Um, it's that long since I've worked on these. It's yeah, you stroke your air valve pushes the cylinder down, and it presses on the bottom here, which opens your airflow to your brakes. And as you, so how are you getting it reversed? I don't know. Yes. Yeah, well, if you undo those four bolts there, you then pull the body of it off. To pull the piston out, you put a bolt in there and just pull it clear. Then you check your rings and the smaller rings here and your butterfly for breakage and wear. And here you undo the big bolt here at the back and check your seat there because you often get rust and that under it and that will give you an air leak in your braking.
school was operating from this part of the building for you. Flashing amber light, flashing red light, pedestrian crossing lights. It's Ferrado brake shoes, that's a Ferrado brake shoe correctly worn, worn out. And it shouldn't really be replaced until it gets to that stage where it gets holes in it. There's a new Ferrado brake shoe, LT5, no longer in use, but these new cheap things that are no good. It shows a cross section of the shoe. A bit of trolley wire and, a, and an ear. Span wire going through an ear. A bit of trolley wire under it. Just wedged in there rather than mechanically fixed. There's a fingerboard off a, looks like a K36 controller. Badly burnt there. Caused by bad driving. Parts out of a line breaker. Uh, that'll be a foreign object found in the groove of a rail. Many trains have run over it. Skid with a carbon in it. That bottle used to have a lot more sand in it than that. It was found in a sandbox in a tram, causing blocked sand. Nice old Coca Cola bottle. We're going to leave it here, Richard. Yes, we'll leave it there. Um, that is the, the insulating part of a sex insulator. It's been badly burnt away. That's a newer type, still made out of the same material. That's new. That's the material they're using today. It's sort of a, I don't know what it is, a plastic. Fiberglass. Could be fiberglass. See the difference. Of course, there's a burnt complete section insulator. Yeah. That bit fits in there. Uh, Pressure gauges. Nothing's turned on. Showing here what's inside it. That one, someone's been fiddling with it and it's broken. It shows how the needles move for the different needles. The model of a W2. This thing here demonstrates the pole rule. It used to be rule 139 in the old book. When running a grade on half speed, a tram must be kept at least three poles intervals 120 yards behind the tram and head. And the poles are all spaced at 40 yards apart. That was the old rule. Yeah, yeah. 